everybody. Thank you for visiting the channel. Past, present, and future peer. I'm your host, past, present, and future. Uh, thank you all for taking the time to visit this channel. Um, but before I begin, I have my latest video out. Esoteric achievements from antiquity. If you guys haven't taken the time, you should check it out. I dive deep when it comes to the Greeks, the Romans, and even to the Egyptians. And I talk about esoteric contributions that they have installed into, into their society, which we have actually adapted to our own society. So you should take the time to watch it. It's actually a good watch. And again, Thank you for everybody for taking the time. Uh, but yeah, so let's get into it. So as you can see, back to my basics when it comes to my book reviews. Doing a book review for Dr. Shannon Swan. Uh, Countdown. Uh, it's a really, really good read. And I felt kind of compelled to actually make this video. Uh, what she goes over is really uh, damning, if I say, say so the most. It made me really actually look into certain habits that I go to. And um, before I begin, um, let me give you a brief of Shannon Helena Swan. And I'll show you here. Is an American environmental and reproductive a paleontologist who is Professor of Environmental Medicine and Public Health at the Achaean School of Medicine at Mount Sinia, where she has taught since April 2011. She is known for her research on environmental contributions to sperm count and the male infertility crisis. In a paper she co-authorized on the subject in 2017, received significant attention in both the popular media and the scholarly literature, becoming the world's 26th most referenced scientific paper published that year in 2020 was Dr. Stacy Colvin co-authorized the book Countdown, which I'm reviewing, How a Modern World is Altering Male and Female Reproductive Development, Threatening Sperm Counts and Imperiling the Future of the Human Race, which discusses declining sperm counts in men and attributes decline to etochron disrupting chemicals. So now, as you've seen from a little preview of her. She has been doing her homework for years when it comes to this subject. And yes, uh, as you've seen about the endocrine disrupting chemicals, actually a class of chemicals that you may not be too familiar, but your body will be really familiar with it, to say the most. So what are endocrine disrupting chemicals? As I'll show you here. An endocrine disruptor is a chemical compound that interferes with the normal functioning of the endocrine system in a reproductive and other biological process regulated by it. An endocrine disruptor is sometimes also referred to as hormonal active agents. Hmm. Endocrine disrupting chemicals or endocrine disrupting compounds are chemicals that can interfere with your system. So now, what does that really mean, actually? As I just showed you, this is really damning because, as you can see, these chemicals are everywhere. These chemicals are in your kids' toys. They're in the plastic bottles that we all use for water daily. They're even in the plastics that we use for the fast food joints. All your local places, I don't want to say the names, but you all know the fast food choices. So you can see how this is really alarming. And what I want to show is the effect. I want to talk about, actually, I, want to I can go on for days. There's a whole list when it comes to these EDCs, which I'm going to just leave it like that because the chronic stuff and chemicals is a little too long to keep saying because I want to keep saying this a lot in this video. So I actually want to talk about two specific EDCs, just two of them. As I said before, there's a whole list. I can make this video hours, but 
I am working on my next part two so of another video but like I said I wanted to make this so like I said just two that everybody all humans are actually exposed to on a daily basis and what are these two phthalates and BPA also known as bisphenol A so as I said I want to get on with these two because I feel like these are the most two important ones well that I want to present to you guys so I said she goes into detail which I'll be showing you different articles that she has put up and different segment um, parts into the book where I'll be underlining and showing you her research so yeah uh, let's get right into it and we're gonna start with phthalates so now as I keep going and where I wanted to start it off with phthalates so now before I get more into it I please be warned I'm going to show you some damning facts that I don't think most of y'all know. And the reason why I'm putting this out there to you because this information is damning and her studies is damning. So, like I said, you'll be surprised where all these chemicals, phthalates, are placed in. You know, be really discerning for you to not look this up yourself. As I say, always do your research. But, as I said again, phthalates are used in a variety of cosmetics and personal care products. Hmm, okay. Phthalates are chemical compounds developed in the last century that are used to make plastics more durable. Okay. These colorless, odorless, oily liquids, also referred to as plasterizers, based on their most common uses. They do not evaporate easily and do not permanently bind to plastic surface to which they are applied. Phthalates are function as solvents and stabilizers in perfumes and other fragrances preparations. Cosmetics that may contain phthalates including nail polish, hairsprays, aftershave lotions, clean cleansers, and shampoos. Wow. So as I just showed you, and you can all look this up on U.S. Food and Drug Administration, they have all this information up, as you say, as I always say, I give you guys the evidence where I get my information so you can look it up for yourself, but as you see, phthalates are, and even to all these cosmetics, to all you ladies, so this should be really concerned to you all, because now I'm going to show you some health risks, health risks when it comes to having these phthalates in your system around all the time as I'll show you here. Phthalates enter the bloodstream and disrupt sex hormone production. Okay. Interfering with sexual development in infants and sexual behavior in adults. This is where it gets good. Levels of phthalates have been dose dependently linked to reduced anogenital distances Decreased sexual desire and satisfaction in women, and malformed genital development in rats. And of course, if you all know, the reason why we use rats is because they're actually the system actually inside, or the system actually is close to ours. So that's why we experiment them on certain stuff to get a diagnosis from them. But as I continue. Phthalates act by mimicking the female hormone estrogen. This is for you females, like I said, because it's mo mostly in cosmetics also, so it's where it gets good. This is for you ladies. Which in turn inhibits production of the male hormone testosterone. As such, phthalates are considered to be endocrine disruptors, as I mentioned before. A substance that interfere with the normal hormone mechanisms that allow a biological organism to interact with its environment and has sparked demands to ban or restrict its use in baby toys. Hmm. And like I explained earlier, and as I just showed you right there, 
Yes. This is in your kids' toys, as I explained earlier, your personal care product. And as I just shown you, what it does to our hormone, to female, and even to male. So you can see how this is really alarming and the reason why I wanted to bring this up. Because of course, it's in your plastic bottles that I, I'm sure everybody's using numerous times. And I had to check myself also to see am I using these items also. In the past, as I said, I've actually been on this little journey of making sure I watch what I intake. And if you want a more deep dive, deep dive into Mrs. Swan, she was also featured on the Joe Rogan experience. If you know Joe Rogan, which I know everybody does. <laughs> she has an hour long interview with Joe explaining all of this. So as I said, I'm not giving her justice. I just want to do a review and just bring this to light. So as I continue here, I want to show you a segment in the book also that she pointed out when it comes to the male and female, as I'll show you here. So now, as I showed you with the chemical phthalates and how it has an effect on the hormones on the female, and when it comes to the upbringing of a child in the womb of a female, you can see how alarming this is when it comes to an infant and his upbringing. So now, I want to show you this article from the Center, Center for Research.org and the effects that phthalates have on children, as I'll show you here. Parental exposure to phthalates. Childhood exposure to phthalates begins in the womb, as I explained earlier. Several studies that have tested phthalate levels in the womb in their third trimester of pregnancy have found health effects in infants, toddlers, and older children of the mothers with the highest levels. There are many different types of phthalates. Most studies look at several types, and the effects tend to vary by type. A 2011 study found that six-month-old boys whose mother had the highest phthalate levels scored lower on brain and motor development tests. The same effect was not true for female infants. And I want to show you the second paragraph. Even short-term exposure has now been linked to development deficiency. As I wanted to point out, yes, even short-term exposure can be really damning to a child. Circulating phthalates during critical illnesses in children are associated with long-term attention deficient. A study of a development in the validation coherent. Researchers found that children in intense care units were exposed to the phthalate DEHP, you know the phthalate, through plastic tubing and catheters. As I said, these are in plastics and everywhere. The children had 18 times as much DEHP in their blood compared to children who had not spent time in the ICU. Now here, look, read this. Four years later, the children who had been exposed to DEHP had, been more, had more problems with attention and motor coordination. The researchers found that the DEHP caused these problems regardless of medical complications of treatments. And now this last part, <laughs> I mean, this is where it just drives home, guys. Researchers indicate that boys exposed to phthalates while in the womb may be more likely to develop smaller genitals and incomplete descent of the testicles. Boys who are born with undescended testicles are two to eight times more likely to develop testicular cancer later on than men born with both testicles descended. Their risk is lessened if they get corrective surgery before age 13. Studies by Harvard researchers have shown phthalates may alter human sperm DNA and semen quality. I mean like, look at all this information already just on phthalates and the adhesive effects that they have to us. 
as human beings. Now, I don't know about you, but this is really concerning to me, that even to this day, that this chemical is still in there. Yes, we have taken reforms to stop this, of course, as I'll show you here, what we have done to take certain precautions when it comes to this chemical. It's not like today in this day and age as I'm releasing this video that the rings and the alarms are, are going off. <laughs> nah, we took certain precautions, but as you'll see, it's still, chemical still narrowing its way through the cracks. So I'll show you here certain ways that we took ways to stop this. 